The African-American legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, religion, and education. We will explore how African-Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is John Coombs, the president of the Vulcan Society, the organization of black firefighters. Welcome to African American Legends. Thank you, sir, and thanks for having me. Now, you are the president, the head now of the Vulcan Society, which is the society organization of African American firefighters. Yes, sir. Of whom there are very few in New York City. Now, tell us what is the role of the Vulcan Society? Our role is like any other organization. We look to enlighten the black community and sharing with them the careers we enjoy as firefighters. Mm -hmm. As you already mentioned, there's very few firefighters in New York City. Who About two or three percent? It's not quite three percent of blacks in the fire department of a department of 11,000. In a 000. city where 25 percent of the population is African American. That's correct, sir. So that's a disparity right there, which I'm sure you guys are going to deal with. But now I understand that in the fire department, police department, many of the organizations represent ethnic groups. You have the Italian group, you have the Irish group, you have the Jewish group, you have the Catholic group, and so on. And it's and the Latino group, of course. So it's logical that the African Americans come together, uh, partially for social functions, but more for educational functions? How do you operate? Well, what we do is the Falcon Society's primary objective is to enlighten the communities in which we serve about the careers in the fire service. Mm -hmm. There's various careers. There's not just firefighters, EMTs, and paramedics. There's a, in, investigations, which is be a fire marshal. There's also um, a, a fire inspectors, as you know, highlighted by the tragedy recently with the Deutsche Bank building, they're gonna need more inspectors. So our objective is simple. We like to inform city residents of the opportunities mm -hmm. right within the city, and that's in the fire service. Mm -hmm. We like to increase our membership, of course, but mm -hmm. more importantly, we like to make sure that the enlightenment is spread spread throughout the five boroughs, and young men and women know about the opportunities in the fire service. What is your membership? How many members do you have? Active and retired, we're just under 500, it's about 460. Mm -hmm. Members. And that's out of what, 15,000, 20,000 firefighters? There's uh, 11,000 plus New York City firefighters mm -hmm. right now in the department. And that, that's firefighters. Now, what about the marshals and inspectors? That includes them as well? No, sir. If, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, include, if you include marshals and EMTs and, and investigators, we, we're probably well up into about close to uh, 17,000 mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Now, firefighting is a very glamorous profession. It's also a profession because people live in firehouses. It has very close social interactions. And for decades, many people, particularly from the white community, have sent their children into those professions. African Americans haven't been there, but Wesley Williams, I uh, have a street name for him in Harlem, 135th Street, was the first black fire captain, and we've had uh, 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 Lowry, Bob Lowry, who was a fire commissioner. So we had African Americans who've been there. But part of the problem, apparently, in getting more African Americans in firefighting is the lack of recruitment efforts, lack of information, and then the examination itself. What has the Vulcan Society done, along with Doug White, who's the commi assistant commissioner in the fire department, to help recruit more people, get them ready for the examination, and, and then train them once they have accept been accepted? Well, first, I, I like <clears throat> to say that Commissioner White, in this last recruitment effort for firefighters, as well as EMTs, has done exceptionally more than they have in the past. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. But more importantly, the Vulcan Society has always been there to assist with everything after filling out the application to prepare with tutorial for the written. We actually help the candidates prepare for the physical. We, we train with them in mm -hmm. Prospect Park, Central Park, and Van Cortlandt Park throughout the cities. So we do all we can to prepare the future candidates for the fire service. Now, all we ask is that they take it seriously and, and not think that they're entitled to it. You have to work for everything that's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fire service being a great career is worthy of working toward. 
Mm -hmm. I think in the past, African Americans have many have wanted to be in the uh, fire service, but either because of the examination of the recruitment and the poor treatment some of them received when they got on the job, uh, people were discouraged from that. Uh, the police department has far better representation of minorities than the fire department. Um, what do you think? The, why do you think that is? There's a history, a culture in the fire service that is still alive and well. There's some who generally believe it's a birthright, mm -hmm. so to speak. They believe that my grandfather was a firefighter, therefore I should be a firefighter. And I really don't challenge them on that issue. If mm -hmm. they believe that, then that's fine. The real question is, what is true? What is true is city occupations, opportunities in the city is open to all. City residents for so long in our department have been overlooked that others begin to believe that we aren't to be there. Mm -hmm. So our thinking should be that there's an opportunity for us, let's explore the opportunity, mm -hmm. and we need to challenge the system that's been in place this entire time. Mm -hmm. Because the exam in itself is no true indicator mm -hmm. of whether or not one will perform well as a firefighter. There's mm -hmm. been no exam, no mm -hmm. testing of an individual who scored an 80 mm -hmm. compared to the individual who scored a 100, whether mm -hmm. or not they make good supervisors mm -hmm. or good or better mm -hmm. firefighters. Well, Therefore, we should challenge the, the um, level of the testing mechanism that's in place and its, its um, value to determine who becomes a firefighter. See, that's very interesting because you're talking about the culture, the culture of a society. Uh, in this country, uh, there's been a culture of segregation for about 200 years of the history of this country. It's only you know, since 1954 that we've had a culture that says we should be have the same opportunity, we should be integrated, uh, we have civil rights laws. Uh, so as a result, you're dealing with the culture, and then you're dealing with the culture of a particular profession which is perceived to be, and probably is, a dangerous profession. It's also a profession, as you say, that goes from one generation to another. And we've had so many cases in the area of firefighters in many other communities, volunteer fire departments, which are really social clubs, have excluded African Americans, we've had to go to court. That makes it kind of difficult working with some of your colleagues who are um, or Caucasian. Uh, how does that work out? How does the Vulcan Society work with the other societies uh, in the fire department? First and foremost, we, we're clear on this. We don't apologize for being black and doing what we need to do. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is enlighten our communities about opportunity, and we're mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. In respect to that, if other organizations feel threatened when they dominate over 90% of the job, mm -hmm. then that's, that's their feeling. Mm -hmm. We know that we can work with any mm -hmm. organization that comes with a clear and open mind. Mm -hmm. What we tell the young men and women that are being trained by us is this is a profession. Mm -hmm. You're not here for social reasons. Mm -hmm. Be professional, learn what your occupation, know how to do it, be on time, and be in the right uniform. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're challenged, 100% we will support you, mm -hmm. but more importantly, if we're doing all, all that we need to do, we, we're not going to be concerned mm -hmm. about what others think. And culture, as you mentioned, it is deep-rooted. Mm -hmm. But we all have cultures. So there's a, a, a component that's ignored, which is the law. There's equal employment. There is a policy of fire department, all of which is at our disposal. Mm -hmm. So I, I ensure the opposition to reevaluate their argument before they come after us. Well, I can see you are a very forceful president of your organization, as with Paul Washington, as the people who preceded him. Now, one of the things that's very interesting, uh, the taxpayers of the city of New York pay for the fire department. Uh, many jobs have required you be a resident of the city to be have that job. Somehow or another, when some of uh, the predominantly white people uh, got these jobs. They moved out of the city, and then when their children wanted to apply, they applied, and there was no residency law. Where do we stand now in terms of the residency to be a New York City firefighter? Uh, one sense, people say it's really fair to restrict jobs and give priority to people who live in the city. Another group says you don't get the best people if you just limit the people in the city. Uh, where do we stand on that now? Let's talk about that second group. They say you don't get the best people if you limit it to the city. They have a great argument. Mm -hmm. 
So why do we limit it to one particular group? Mm -hmm. So if we're going to open it, then let's open it totally. When let's, you say to one group, you mean it's, well, it's predominantly white male. Mm -hmm. The fire services of eleven thousand, ninety percent of it is white male. Mm -hmm. So although they pose that argument, they don't live up to their mm -hmm. their argument that they're posing. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to look at that, and mm -hmm. I'll say this. There are people who are capable of being firefighters living throughout the, the state at residency, which is the five boroughs of New York, Nassau, Suffolk, Rockland, Putnam, and Orange counties, mm -hmm. So, and Westchester County. If you're, you're entitled to live in these areas, then you come into the city. There should be, in, in our opinion, uh, a certain allotment for city residents. Mm -hmm. That ensures city employment. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, look at the economic impact. Mm -hmm. We're allowing millions of dollars on a bi-weekly basis, mm -hmm. twice a month, to leave the city in droves. They're literally mm -hmm. getting in their cars and driving the money out of the city. I don't know about this current administration or any other administration. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take an economic genius to realize this is just not counterproductive for future growth of any city. Well, the counter-argument, which I don't believe, but it's being presented, is that if you set up a quota, you will not necessarily get the best people. Now, of course, when you deal with people who feel the job is inherited because their grandfather had it, you may not also get the best people. So one of the issues is, and I think Commissioner Doug White has been pointing this up, you do a good job of recruitment. You get a good pool of applicants. You do good training for the exam, and you probably will get a well a good distribution of people from the city. And then I understand in the more recent examination, about 33 to 35 percent of the people who passed the exam were people of color. Is that correct? That's correct. The, the city, and I can tell you the date, was November 27th of 07, and they had a press conference, the, the commissioner as well as the mayor, stating how well they're doing and, and they're moving upward. But I, I want everyone to be mindful just because the passing rate of the first 5,000, not the in total test, not mm -hmm. the total applicant pool, but of the first 5,000 people who passed the exam, 33% of that is diverse. Now, that is no guarantee that there'll be firefighters. So the Vulcan's position is simple. When those individuals mm -hmm. are in the firehouses mm -hmm. at the capacity of firefighters mm -hmm. operating as firefighters do, then we'll have the press conference about the success mm -hmm. of the recruitment and the amount of people of diversified backgrounds in the fire service. Well, what's the gap between passing the, the uh, test and becoming a firefighter? What has to happen in that period? After you pass the written exam, then there's still the physical exam. Mm -hmm. There's a background investigation. There's a psychological exam. Mm -hmm. And now you go to the academy, which is, I understand, six months now. It's going to be mm -hmm. increased to six months. Mm -hmm. Now, um, with regard to the background investigation, I know at one time with the police exam, they would screen out people because of minor juvenile offenses. I assume that's out now. I assume that they don't really hold juvenile offenses against you to be a firefighter. Well, uh, let's not assume. Mm -hmm. In some cases, we've had people sworn in after the swearing in because they had to prove time and time again as a, a youthful offender you know, in a 12-year, in a 10-year period, I've since been a productive citizen. Mm -hmm. So that's not, you're right on one hand, that it, it has happened. It doesn't happen as much, but it still happens. Mm -hmm. And the Vulcan Society is mm -hmm. encouraging all people who, of like minds to be aware of the process on every level, from mm -hmm. investigations to the academy, mm -hmm. to the training, to the the preparation, every area of getting persons from tests to fire department as a capacity of firefighter has to be scrutinized for the benefit of having a good product, which is a well-rounded firefighter. Uh, what does the physical exam consist of? Well, it's, it's uh, various exercises that firefighters will have to endure at, at the, at, in their occupation. For example, there's a, a dummy drag. There might be an instance where you have to drag someone from just maybe 30 feet. I've actually had that experience mm -hmm. in, in a building in Harlem. It doesn't seem far, but when fire's rolling over your head and, smoke. and adrenaline is going, and that 200 pounds probably feels like a thousand. But we want to know, the department wants to know, the public needs to know, are you capable of the physical challenges of this occupation? So I do welcome some standards in when it comes to firefighting. 
but they, they don't have to be extreme because that doesn't make you a better firefighter if you're extremely strong or not as strong as the next person. By the way, what makes a good firefighter? I would say the characteristics of a firefighter, a, a, a well-equipped firefighter is one who's willing to learn his craft, who's determined, and who, who doesn't give up in spite of, it seems like, uh, countless challenges against him that he or she is confronted with. Firefighters are determined. There's, there's one position in the fire department in particular, it's called the roof. It's self-explanatory. That individual in the ladder company is going to the roof, and it says, the roof man, a roof person, roof firefighter, is never deterred from getting the roof. That speaks volumes. Hell or high water, you're getting to that roof and you're going to do what you need to do, which is give a verbal report from what's your, your eyesight above. Now, that's very interesting because many people think that every run a firefighter takes is a death-defying run, but I understand that some 80% of the runs really don't deal with fire. Some are false alarms, some are EMT, emergency medical, etc. How really dangerous is the job? I'll say, in the, the course of your career, from your first day to your last day, could be as dangerous as anything. However, the, the whole glamour and excitement and, I would say, overemphasization by media, it, it, you're as good as your training. We train on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, every day you come to work, you should have some form of training or drilling. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a dangerous occupation, but not hardly as dangerous as people would like you to believe. Um, of a given day, if you make 10 runs from your firehouse, about how many runs are actually fires? Uh, you can have from zero of them being fires to mm -hmm. maybe two of them being fires. Mm -hmm. um, and of those fires, how many of them are really serious fires? Every fire is serious because you get burned up. But how many of them are really very dangerous fires, or how many of them you can knock out in 20 minutes? Th that's valid. There are quite a few of them maybe could be food on the stove and, and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. It isn't uh, this infernal mm -hmm. that you may see on the, the, the Sunday night special. Mm -hmm. there, there aren't many infernos like of that magnitude Thank God. Yeah. going on. And, and, and you're right. We, we have to look at what's going on. The real estate in New York has increased. People are trying to hold on to their homes. The burning of East New York mm -hmm. and South Bronx no longer exists, as mm -hmm. well as Bed-Stuy and Bushwick. Th those neighborhoods are taking a turn for the better. Mm -hmm. And those investors aren't allowing their places to burn like mm -hmm. that. So people are more conscious and cautious of how they behave. There are still some fires. There is a level of danger. But again, it's, it's not so exaggerated. It really isn't that. Now, who drives a fire truck? Well, you, you become a chauffeur, a train qualified chauffeur. I, I happen to be a chauffeur of an engine company. Uh -huh. And after several years, depending on your company, usually after five or six years, your company commander or the captain decides who they'd like to go based on how you behave, what mm -hmm. they see in you, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I probably had some life experience. Mm -hmm. I de definitely have life experience I brought to the fire department, and that was one of the factors, not to mention I, I followed directions. And I'm a little, probably now, see, if I were a young person listening to you, I'd be interested in trying to become a firefighter. Do you go out to communities and schools and talk to kids about this? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, Wingate High School on the 4th of April and as these calls come in, we, we do the best we can to fill them, mm -hmm. as well as the fire department's recruitment. They do a good job of trying to meet those needs of recruitment issues. You know, this program will be airing throughout the uh, summer and so on. How could someone get in touch with the Vulcan Society to invite somebody to come to a school or community group to talk about the, the Korean fire department? First and foremost, on Labor Day, that's the first Monday in in September, the Vulcan Society, the Vulcan Hall is usually open for the public. Where is Vulcan Hall located? And that's located on 739 Eastern Parkway. I mentioned Labor Day because that's the day so many people are on Eastern Parkway. Mm -hmm. So we're right on Eastern Parkway, 739 is our address. We're between Kingston and Brooklyn mm -hmm. Avenues. And the phone number is 718-778-7978. If you reach out to us, uh, we will return the call. Someone's there two to three days a week. We don't have a person sitting at the phone waiting, so please leave a detailed message with your name and number. Again, our number is 718-778-7978. Now, political pressure has a lot to do with what happens in any community. There's been a lot of political pressure about the lack of African-American firefighters, 
but in my opinion, not enough. What are you guys doing, and women as well, because they are women firefighters as well, what are you doing to ratchet up the political pressure so that African Americans get more of a shot? Uh, this most recent recruitment effort was great, but clearly more needs to be done. For starters, the one thing we can do, and we encourage the public, the city residents, who are concerned about the future of their grandchildren, is to support the Vulcan Society. When we ask for your support, we reach out to our local politicians. Part of why so many people are allowed to live outside of the city is legislation. There was legislation put in place some time ago, and that was done for those counties outside New York. Those state legislators ensured employment for their constituents. Well, we can ask our administrators and our um, local officials and elected officials, as I say, the same thing, to ensure employment for city residents. It's only economically sound to do that. So we're asking the public to support us when we, when we ask for this. But the, the people will say, why do we need to ensure employment? Isn't a better argument that these people are from our community, they know our community, and they will serve our community at, at least as well and probably better than people who live 50 miles away? I, that's our argument. Mm -hmm. But don't believe that for one moment that we won't be challenged on every aspect of this. Mm -hmm. That's why insurances are necessary. Mm -hmm. There are some who argue the point that the Vulcan Society has a lawsuit right now with the Justice Department against the Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And some would argue that isn't necessary. Look at what we're doing. But if you look, uh, let's look at the current administration, uh, the current mayor and his administration. Up until recently, very little was done in terms of recruitment. Now that fire is put to them, they're acting in accordance to what they should have been doing from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I'm the mayor of New York City, and I see this problem, an issue that's been brought up for the last 60 years. Mm -hmm. 60 years. This is not new. You can walk in and say, I'm a mayor for everyone, yet you don't begin to address mm -hmm. the eyesores. That's an, this is an eyesore mm -hmm. on the department's behalf, on the city residents' behalf. It's just not a good thing mm -hmm. when city employment isn't readily available for city residents. Some will say, well, you can take the exam. Is it widespread? Mm -hmm. There's an advantage being a volunteer firefighter from outside counties. And that advantage is they learn what we're going to learn in the academy because the training that our mm -hmm. probationary firefighter candidates receive, mm -hmm. they've already received. Mm -hmm. There's a clear advantage. Mm -hmm. So if you want a diverse department, you have to do a serious recruitment campaign and that, up until recently, wasn't done. Mm -hmm. Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a struggle. He said that in 1851, it's still true in 2008, 2009. And what the Vulcan Society does is try to focus that. And one of the things that we find as we go through education, we go through health care, we go through business, we go through uh, law enforcement, that African Americans still need to protest, still need to use their power of uh, protest, their power of politics to get a fair shake. Because as you say, you don't want an advantage just because you're African American. No, sir. You want an opportunity because it's fair, because it's in your community and you can produce. The Vulcan Society believes that, and I think you believe that in particular. Uh, what's the next step in your move to get more African-American firefighters? Unlike the fire service, we recruit all the time. We recruit ongoing. Um, we have mm -hmm. a van uh -huh. that's it has a wrap on it, and the wrap is of black firefighters. Some would, and some would challenge that and say, that's not the department. I said, no, I'm advertising to a particular group. Mm -hmm. That group is underrepresented. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there's women who are black, there's men who are black on the vehicle, and it says, and it asks the question, would you become, would you be interested in becoming a firefighter? Join the FDNY. Mm -hmm. And to call, to, to join the FDNY, call, and it has the number, 718-999-FDNY. Uh, and the point of that is this. If we are traveling throughout our five boroughs, our great city, 
and young men and women in black communities see someone of their likeness in that capacity, now it becomes a realistic idea, mm -hmm. not just an idea. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned about our great legends of the past, Dr. King once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice mm -hmm. everywhere. We wholeheartedly believe that in the Vulcan society. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we will continue to fight this injustice in just employment. That's, but it's, it's deeper rooted than that. It really is. And of course, it's, you're helping to preserve our community. Our community, of course, is the entire city of New York. But because of residential segregation and others, there are areas that are predominantly black that you work on more so than just any other com community in the city. Uh, today on African American Legends, we've been talking with John Coombs, the president of the New York Vulcan Society, the Society of Black Firefighters, and we talk about opportunities for African Americans in the New York City Fire Department. Thanks for being with us today, John. Thank you, sir, for having me.